Hi, everybody. I'm Mark Middleton, all the way live at Growing Boulder headquarters. Good morning to you. Uh, welcome to GBHQ. Uh, you know, it was one year ago today on April 23rd, which was a Thursday last year. And, you know, in the midst of the unfolding uh, pandemic that I posted this on my Facebook page, Facebook did what it does. It gave me a one year ago today post this morning. Uh, and I thought this was a great way to start this show. Uh, I posted the graphic Growing Boulder, What's Next with Mark and Bill and, and made this comment. Yesterday at half past, what were we thinking? We decided to do a live 30 minute weekly show on Facebook starting tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And that's the Growing Boulder way. Tune in to see if we can keep the wheels on the road or hope that we can't. Either way, it should be fun. That was a year ago today. We decided to start this uh, with 48 hours notice. And the little live program, uh, as you know, was called What's Next back then. It actually has led to a new commercial television show that will be launching in the summer on network affiliates uh, throughout the country, which is why the name of this program is now Growing Bolder Now, to avoid any confusion and frankly, mostly among our staff, because we easily confuse ourselves with all that we've got going on. But whatever you call it, <clears throat> we wanted to keep this program going because even, you know, if the, the live audience is small, and, and honestly, some days it is, these episodes are recorded, they're posted, and they're viewed many, many times over in the next week or so. But the real reason that we wanted to keep it going is that we do enjoy meeting with you on a regular basis, and we greatly appreciate the fact that you show up. And also because we're inspired by, by what happens when we do this every week. Uh, and as you guys know, if you've been here over the past year, we have laughed uh, and we've cried. We've had heart-to-heart -heart talks about racial inequality, uh, about the challenges of Alzheimer's, the, the struggles of care di uh, caregiving, uh, the tragedy of the pandemic. We've talked about losing spouses and losing jobs, uh, but mostly, as we like to do, we've talked about hope and possibility. We've talked about opportunity. We talked about personal transformation and the ability to adapt and to accommodate to life's many challenges. We've talked about making a difference in our communities in spite of the challenges of the pandemic. And along the way, uh, we've interviewed authors and thought leaders like Gretchen Rubin and Carl Honore and Ken Dykewald and Diana Nyatt and many, many more. We've talked to fitness gurus like Denise Austin and Jillian Michaels. We've talked to renowned photographers like rock photographer Henry Diltz and fashion photographer Ari Seth Cohen. We've talked to TV stars like travel guru Rick Steves and survivor man Les Stroud. We've talked to artists and musicians and entrepreneurs and elected officials. And, and honestly, probably what I've liked the most, we've talked to dozens of ordinary people that are just doing their thing, living extraordinary lives like Larry McCool and his No Drama Llama. We talked to cave diver uh, Joe Heinrich. We've talked to fashion designer Arlinda McIntosh and rock star Yogini and organic farmer Denise Kaufman. So talking about maybe going off the rails, we're going to try something that we haven't done before. In fact, I'm going to start with a quote, uh, a quote that I heard literally eight minutes ago, Mike Nannis, who you will meet in a, in a moment. And I wrote it down. The moment he said it, I came back here and wrote it down. And he, he doesn't know that I did this. But Mike said to me 10 minutes ago, this could be one of the best feats in the history of television or a complete disaster, but I love the anticipation. Uh, and that's really what Growing Boulder is all about, is pushing the boundaries. So if all goes wrong here, folks, in the next minute or so, I will be back to this camera or at another camera. But for now, uh, I'm going to pick up my phone and we're going to. And what we're what I really want to do is I want to walk and see if Bill Schaefer is anywhere around, because as you guys know, there we go. As you guys know, Bill Schaefer has not only been an integral part of this program, he has, in truth, done most of the heavy lifting. Mr. Schaefer, he is here. Oh, are you? <laughs> uh, 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 apologies for the interruption. We're actually on Growing Boulder now. Will look you, look what I'm doing. I'm just checking in to see how, how you're doing. This is great. Uh, uh, some of the people that we've had on the show, that's great. You know, I just was reflecting about the fact that we're we're still doing this show a year later. We never intended to do it, but a couple of months. Uh, you know, what do you think about it? And is there anything special or most memorable for you? Oh, oh yeah. I, 
like every like everything else we do, the, this whole thing was growing boulders all about connection, and that's the one thing we lost during the lockdown. So we were all frantic for it, and, and we found that by using these tools, we could bring people together, not with us, but with you, the people that are watching. Mark, look, I, I was just just this morning, right now. There's somebody here from Rhode Island. There's somebody here from uh, from outside of Houston, Texas. Look, South Wales, UK. There's somebody here from from Arizona, and there was somebody here from Lima, Peru, as well. This is all because we're connected by the same heart and the same feeling to 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 see positive, life affirming things. And there aren't a whole lot of places to get it, thank goodness, for growing more. <laughs> and nothing you like looking at more than <laughs> yourself, you know. Uh, and it is, Bill, it's one of the great things about the pandemic. You know, we, we started to do these things because we had to, and, and many people are not letting them go, this digital connectivity, because it's easy, easy for me to say. Mike and Jason and Jacob did all of this, but uh, uh, it's, it's a cool way to stay connected. You know, it's done. It's allowed us to connect with people we never thought we could, like Tim Shriver, like Jimmy Webb, the great songwriter, Glenn Campbell's wife came on and broke our hearts talking about Glenn Campbell's final days and how he dealt with Alzheimer's and, and even ordinary people like Scott Grant who sells classic cards. We talked to a magician in Japan on how he was coping with the loss of his income. So it really has made the whole world possible to bring to all of you each and every single week. Well, thank you for all you've done. You know, Bill will always raise his hand when we say, all right, who's going to do uh, uh, Growing Boulder now? So thank you for that, Billy. Appreciate you letting us interrupt you. I'll be watching. I'm going to move over here and see if we can interrupt Mike Nannis. You've seen Mike before. We like to feature him every now, or at least he likes to feature himself. He's the guy pushing the button so he can push himself up. All right, Mike, I, I quoted you a moment ago, a great moment in television history or a complete disaster. How are we doing so far? So far, so good. We're holding everything together. I just want to say I've never been quoted by anybody about anything, so I'm already feeling like this is my lucky day. Uh, well, you know, folks, I have to tell you, the best thing about Mike is that he is so passionate about what we do, and he's not just a guy who sits here and pushes the buttons. Sometimes he'll forget to push a button because <laughs> he is so enamored with the conversation. Now, you know, what, what do you like most about what we've done in this program? Oh, the people that we talk to. I mean, they truly are ordinary people living extraordinary lives, if I could borrow one of our many sayings here at Growing Boulder. But I get inspired every single day. Every time we talk to somebody, like today will be a great example. Anytime we talk to anybody, I walk away inspired. And, and yeah, it does distract me on occasion, but I can always fix it in post. Well, you do a great job. Give me a fist Thank bump there, brother. Much. All right, uh, let's keep moving because... Uh, Actually, today we're going to start talking about tomorrow because tomorrow is April 24th, as you guys know, and it is International Tai Chi Day, and we're going to give you a live Tai Chi demonstration. So let me put this phone down and see if I can get pictures. Uh, International Tai Chi Day, and the reason we wanted to talk about that to you guys is that, number one, Full disclosure, I know nothing about Tai Chi, but I am enamored by the thought of it, by everything that I've read. Tai Chi is practiced by residents in over 80 different countries. Are we still up or has this turned into a disaster? We are still up. Uh, Mark, if I could just- still up Or did we lose it? We are lost we our up? image. So if we could get- I, you want to push up this one? Let's see, which camera you've got? No, the, the camera- the camera. We spoke too soon. We spoke too soon. Mikey, can you take my phone? I can, uh, but you're out of the room. If you could join us back in the uh, in the room here, I'll punch your phone up. Let me go back in here. Is, Mikey, is my phone still working? Can you take my phone? It's not. You have to. It's not in the room. You have to log back in. I have to log back in. Are you still there? And I'm still here, and we've lost our other signal. All right. So <laughs> we talked too soon. Either a great moment in television history or, or a, a complete, complete disaster. disaster. Or the third thing that we didn't really think about, something that would, something that would be interesting. All right. I understand we're back over Looks here. Looks like we're back. My phone is not working. All right. So you keep talking. I'm going to go over All right. here. We got this. Stay with us, folks. 
we got this. Mark's heading back over to uh, the space. Here. Right. There we are. So you, you just kind of roll with the punches. This is this is what growing boulder is about. This is what aging is about. It's about adaptation and accommodation. We figured it out. We'll we'll give it our best. But I wanted to talk about World Tai Chi Day because Tai Chi is now the most popular form of exercise, if you will, in the entire world. It's practiced by people in 60 different countries, 80 different countries, and tomorrow. April 24th, they're all going to be doing whatever it is they do, which is what I was curious to find out. So we got a couple of special guests here from the Martial Arts Center for Health. This is Mr. Matt Mitchell, who is an instructor there. Yes, sir. And Debbie Scanlon, who is a student there. I want to talk to both of you. But Matt, let, let, let's start with you. Yes, sir. You've been doing this for a long time. Why is it growing and popular? In fact, it, it is by most accounts, the fastest growing and already most popular form of exercise in the world. What are the benefits? Well, the benefits, I think, first off, if I may say, I think the reason it's become so huge so quickly is because with this pandemic, one of the positives that's come out of it is we need to take better care of ourselves. We need to focus on the breathing, the alignment of the body, soft, gentle movements, things that make us feel grounded. And Tai Chi focuses a lot on just that, putting the attention in the lower body and the breath. and you could tell, I could take you through something right now, Mark, and very shortly you'd be feeling that centeredness, things are gonna be okay. So I feel that it provides not just the physical, but also the mental benefit. I think a lot of people might want to dismiss it, you know, younger people in particular, because they don't think it's vigorous enough. But right. in terms of balance, and as you noted before, in terms of cognitive development, uh, right. neuroplasticity, and, and all of that, it, it exactly. really can't be beat. No, it can't. And in fact, it's such a misconception that it's not going to be physical enough. Everybody is surprised how much they sweat when they go through Tai Chi. Without a doubt, it's a very amazing form, if you will, of exercise, I think it more as knowledge. You know, it's amazing. And don't get the wrong impression because I think it's growing among older people, but younger people love this thing. But but balance is a problem that everybody struggles with as they get older. You know, people who fall, 30% of people who fall over the age of 65 never get out of the hospital. When Huge. it comes to balance, this is it. This is it. Yeah. It's a very common fear and not just an older anymore. Now people 30s, 40s coming in worried about falling. You get so disconnected from your body. And then the things you took for granted, now you want back, you can. The it, body hasn't forgotten. It is a form of moving meditation. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> They're going to give us a demonstration. But Debbie, I want to talk to you because I know you've been doing Tai Chi for a long, long time. Yes. We talk mm -hmm. about prehabilitation here at Growing Boulder, the act of preparing for the setbacks that we're all going to face of some sort. Mm -hmm. Prehabilitation, we always say, helps us bounce back. You're, you're a living example of how Tai Chi was a form of prehabilitation because you had a terrible accident. Yes, absolutely. Um, I started back in 1999 doing the Tai Chi, so I was 47 at the time. My accident was in 2019. So from doing the Tai Chi and the other forms, my bone density was like that of a 30 year old. So the accident could have been a lot worse than what it was, but I did have neck and shoulder injuries, but then that was complicated with a brain injury. So when the brain, you know, I knew that this would heal eventually, but when you have a brain injury, everything is disconnected. So from being able to do Tai Chi and be very centered and the mind and body's working together, when I could hardly walk or talk or write, so it was getting back in to be able to do the Tai Chi, which what Matt was saying, it was everything was so grounded. So I had to get back into only moving the lower body, then moving the lower body. Then they said, okay, well now we can incorporate some of the upper body. And now two years later, I'm back to doing my Tai Chi, I think even better because I feel like I'm even more connected from going through from almost from the beginning again, and then getting grounded and centered. So I'm very grateful. How much credit do you give Tai Chi for being able to recapture a quality of life? Well, um, I can't emphasize enough, um, you know, that you can start at any time in your life, but having that connection and then having the brain injury, I knew it was in there but I just couldn't coordinate the mind and body to be able to work together. So from having the information prior to going in, I was eventually able to start reconnecting that. So if you have some type of you know, um, 
program that you're doing, continue with it, start at an early age so you have a baseline. So if you do, I mean, things happen in life, you know, I never thought I was going to get plowed into and Amen. turn into a five car accident, but um, you have the ability um, and the body has the knowledge to heal. You just have to let it do that. So you don't want to go too fast. And that was why with the instructors, it's like, okay, we're only doing lower body because you don't have as much pain there. Mm. And it, basically it took me out of all pain. I mean, I was able literally to get out of all pain. Well, we're thrilled to, to, to see so, your, your company. Yes. Thank you for sharing the story. Man, I think she brings up a good point. I, I've seen people in wheelchairs doing Tai Chi, people that are overweight. Uh, right. you know, I think we have to offer the standard disclaimer, folks. Check with your physician first, but, but accommodation, uh, figuring out a way to, to adapt what you do to particular uh, uh, challenges is, is something that Tai Chi enables uh, really easily. It, 100%. And in fact, Mark, we have so many medical professionals that are some of the top acupuncturists, osteopaths, you, you pick it, you name it. This is a lot of times when they've gotten their patients to a certain point where they send them to go to continue because you can only take it so far. And with something like this, we've worked with people of every type of body issue, concern, life experience to people that are completely blind we've worked with. We have 100% faith that we can do something through Tai Chi. Before we get to your demo, uh, Debbie, I think, is probably one of your rock star students. I know at the, at the other end of the spectrum, you've got people like George Diaz, yes. uh, who, who brings the, you know, brings it down in terms. We're trying. Uh, you know, George, case come on over here, George. <laughs> Uh, George, I got the this you is know, Glowing uh, Boulder's <laughs> own George D. You you turned sixty five recently, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. Uh, you're looking great for sixty. You're looking yeah. great for any yeah. age. George went skydiving on his sixty fifth birthday. What drew you to Tai Chi? Why do you do it? I was basically a uh, Mark. I was a gym rat for decades, and I just got tired of doing three sets of. 10, 20, whatever it was. And I needed something else. And what I needed as I got older, and I and I started with the Martial Arts Center for Health about four years ago, was core work, balance, mm -hmm. just things, core, uh, flexibility, things that I really needed work on. And it was a perfect fit. And as as we know, in, in terms of challenges, it was great because you're, you're, the, the teachings, and it's not only Tai Chi, there's a lot of great forms that they use. It allows, it forces you to think, okay, what am I doing next? You know, the brain is clicking at the same time as the body. So it's a perfect mix. And I bet it helps you on the dance floor because I know you got some moves. Well, I don't I don't want to I don't want to brag, but <laughs> perhaps. All right. well, a lot, salsa, let, salsa is a you know side yeah, benefit of salsa that. Salsa is a side <laughs> side benefit. Uh, Matt and Debbie, can you can you give us a demonstration? Talk us through some of what you might give to a class and I'm gonna get out of the way and go back to the other camera, provided Love everything to. works out. Love to appreciate you coming. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. God, I you really well. appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna walk through and just give a little description of some of the movements. Okay, so we're gonna set our breathing and just let everything relax down. Okay, just make this beautiful circle. Focus the weight onto the leg you're gonna stand on, slowly stepping out, exhaling as the arms just float down, focus into the lower body. And there the eyes gently follow the hands as we inhale, exhale, breathe in, breathe out. Same thing, opposite side. Just take your time. Everything should be relaxed in the neck. Relax your shoulders. Exhale out. Breathe in. Breathe out. From there, we're going to shift the weight to the left, drawing in. Up. Exhale out. Nice and smooth. And exhale out. Inhale, exhale. So keep the concentration into the lower body.
asking Matt Mitchell from the Martial Arts Center for Health with a demonstration of Tai Chi. And in just a second, he's going to pass it off to uh, Debbie Scanlon, who uh, has used Tai Chi to recover from a very serious automotive injury. And one more time. All of this in celebration of World Tai Chi Day, which is tomorrow. And stand, breathe in. Let everything relax down into the center of the body. Exhale out. Okay, now we're going to see another form of Tai Chi from Debbie. This is Debbie Scanlon, who we uh, chatted with just recently. Debbie has been a longtime practitioner of Tai Chi, who was involved in a very serious automotive accident. And she has used Tai Chi to overcome a traumatic brain injury, multiple injuries to her body, especially below the waist. And she credits the practice of Tai Chi with helping her regain a quality of life and the passion and enthusiasm that uh, she obviously has. This is Debbie Scanlon making the rest of her life, the best of her life, thanks largely to Tai Chi. You know, folks, the feeling regarding Tai Chi these days is it's not just something that everybody can do, which is what Matt told us about previously, but it is something that we should all do. It's easy. It's gentle. As you can see, it's been described as a form of moving meditation. And, you know, I cannot thank Matt Mitchell and Debbie Scanlon enough for coming today, this morning, to chat with us live about Tai Chi and, and, and sharing what they do because, uh, you know, it really is remarkable. So, you know, he, here we are, uh, here, we, here we still are, uh, one year after doing something that we thought we'd only do for a, a few months at most. And, you know, I think as Bill and I mentioned earlier, it is one of the positive signs of uh, uh, positive outcomes of the pandemic, as, as frightening as it has been it has pushed all of us to be creative and to find new ways to communicate. Uh, it's pushed us all to adapt and accommodate. You heard us talk about that earlier today. Uh, ad adapting and accommodating has become, you know, really my personal mantra lately because it is the key to not just successful aging, but to, to successful living. Uh, we've got this little program called Growing Boulder Now, and we're about to launch a new program called Growing Boulder Next. And you know, I just love the intersection of, uh, of those two thoughts, now and next, because, you know, as, as trite as it is, uh, you've heard us say it, you've heard many people say it, now is all we have. Uh, you know, it's this moment, and, and the fact that you guys share it with us each and every week, I can't tell you how much uh, that means to us. And, you know, <clears throat> it, it's this moment that we plant the seeds for what's next, which is why we have a show called Now and a Show called What's Next, and at the risk of sounding promotional, um, one of my favorite moments of every day uh, is what I get every day. It's something called the bold start. Uh, it comes in my inbox, in my email, and that's the entire email. It's a single meme. It takes about eight or 10 seconds to look at, and it's a prompt for how to live the day. It's a breath of fresh air. And honestly, I get more feedback on, on this than almost anything that we do. So I'm going to leave you with today's bold start meme, which is especially appropriate in today's world of uncertainty. Uh, it's a quote from Shimon Perez, the former president of Israel, who said, and yet without knowing the future, I remain a man full of hope. So no matter what else we're doing now in the moment, it's critically important that we have hope. So thank you so much for hanging out with us because you give us hope. And if you are at all intrigued about our daily Bold Start email, uh, and you really should be, check it out. It's free. It's easy to share. We're not trying to sell you anything. 
We're just trying to give you a, a great start to each and every day. You can subscribe anytime you want. Uh, but I do have to tell you, nobody does. Just go to growingbolder.com and sign up for the Insider and you will start receiving the bold start each and every morning. So uh, that's it, folks. It's been a great year. Uh, we're going to keep on keeping on and uh, we look, uh, we'll look for you each and every Friday right here. Have a good day.